Hello, this is John Flutter here. Welcome back to the channel, Myofunctional Orthodontic Training. I want to continue the short series of videos about some of the issues that have come up in the discussion about the litigation between Dr. Michael Mew and the General Dental Council. And these areas of disagreement, and then these areas that I think there is common agreement. The question of crooked teeth and craniofacial growth uh, is an interesting one, which I think we can spend some time looking at. The maxillae, uh, two bones that form the upper dental arch, if we look at the anatomical ideal, surely we must judge a child's growth and development of their maxillae against this anatomical ideal form. And if we see the anatomical ideal form, then we consider that the growth and development of that part of the cranium is going well. But if we see teeth that are crowded and the jaws don't match each other, then we have to conclude that the underlying bone has not developed to the anatomical ideal shape and size. And we need to understand that at birth, most of the development of the lower and middle third of the faces has not taken place. The cranial vault is very largely developed at birth, but most of the development after birth is in the lower and middle thirds of the face. And so the growth and development of that, uh, the maxillae, is nearly fully developed by the age of six. And this structure, this upper jaw, not only contains the teeth, but it also encircles the nasal airway. It's an important part of the development of the entire human body. And if the maxillae have not formed with the correct shape and size, evidenced by the crooked teeth, it stands to reason that all the other bones that are in direct contact with the maxillae will also be slightly misshapen and slightly deformed in order to accommodate the deformities within the maxillae. So if one bone in the maxilla is distorted, they are all distorted. And when we look at why that has happened, and we look at some of the textbooks, particularly the one by Enloe and Hans, what we need to look at really is why is it that those bones have not grown to the anatomical ideal? And we're going to look at two different areas over subsequent videos. Is it as a result of a genetic blueprint that the jaws have developed that way and the bones are deformed? Or is it a result of some biomechanical forces, whatever they may be, that have influenced the growth and development of those bones that have led to the deformity and thus to the crooked teeth? So certainly there's something going on where the ideal growth and development, not just of the bones bearing the teeth, but of all of the bones within the cranium have not developed their ideal anatomical shape and size. And we see that as a pattern of, uh, of uh, collapse from birth until the point when the child is 12 or 13 years of age and the cranial bones are pretty much fully developed. Teenagers' bodies grow, but their craniums grow very little after that. So, are crooked teeth as a result of poor cranial, craniofacial growth? That is the result of poor craniofacial growth. The two go hand in hand. Crooked teeth is evidence of craniofacial growth. And if you have poor craniofacial growth, then you will to a degree have crooked teeth. Um, what I'm going to look at in the next video is why the most common craniofacial deformity is when the maxillae are set back within the cranium. Why that happens and the effects that that will have on the temporomandibular joint, the airway, and of course on the malocclusion, how the two jaws relate to each other. So that wraps up what I want to say today about crooked teeth and the result of poor craniofacial growth. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you like that and look forward to seeing you in our next video.